Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. This is episode 142. We've got Rebecca here. Hi everybody. At Rebby J. Many of you know her from the Slack channel and from the Patreon community and the Ravelry community. When did you join? Uh, it was, I was just thinking about this, it was January of 2017. Wow. So, yeah. I yeah. Think that's right. Mike asked me how long we've known each other and I was like, I feel like it's close to four years. Yeah, it's so over it's three. About, yeah. It's over three. That's mm -hmm. very cool. Yeah. So did you have good good travels yesterday? Yes, it was super smooth, everything, all the planes were on time. Uh, yeah, the weirdest part was not having my kids around. It was like, I have, I can hear my thoughts for so long together. <laughs> it was really strange, but nice. <laughs> And you could knit uninterrupted. Yes. Mm -hmm. So welcome everybody um, to this to the chat. I see you guys are already like well on your way. Um, it's just great to have everybody here. Thank you so much. I know there's lots of people that move things around in their schedule to make sure that they were here today because it's sort of a special episode for us. And um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. If you're a new viewer and a new, um, and this is your first time watching the podcast, welcome. Um, this has been a long time in the making to have Rebecca here and to have her travel down from Rankin. So um, it, it's sort of a little bit of a different episode, but as, as always, we will still be talking about lots of hand spinning and uh, making and using your hand spun. We've got lots of stuff from the community to share with you, and um, we'll be talking a little bit about Fibers West, which is this coming weekend, and uh, that's sort of, you know, it's going to be a packed show. Um, welcome to returning viewers, and of course, as always, thank you so much to our Patreon community. You guys are in the chat, you're chattering away, and I just so appreciate it, so thank you so much. Um, We've got a couple of, I've just got sort of some little things to announce. So Fibers West is this weekend. It is Friday and Saturday. It is at Langley Event Center in Langley, British Columbia, which is uh, about 30 minutes um, east of Vancouver. And um, I hope that if you're local that you're going to be coming. It's a new venue for this year. Um, there have been some issues the last couple of years in Cloverdale. So they've moved it a little bit further east, but it is a really great location and there are buses. So I hope that you'll be coming out to, uh, to, to the event and to the marketplace. Rebecca and I will be in the marketplace on Friday. So if you see us, please come and say hello. Um, because if you don't come and say hi to us, we might not see you. I will be lecturing on Friday on the, our book, me and Katrina's book, Unbraided, um, from 10.30 till 11.30. So if you're interested in that, please come and um, say hello. And if you're interested in the lecture, that would be wonderful too. And then, uh, of course, we're, um, on Saturday, um, we're going to be in a workshop all day. And I'll be teaching um, a workshop that Katrina and I designed uh, based on the book. So to those who have signed up and who and I will be seeing on Saturday, um, I'm just really excited about that. And I've got everything ready to go. I'm so excited. And Katrina did an amazing job. So um, of, of colors and fiber and whatnot um, per usual. So that'll be really, really fun. Um, so yeah, that's sort of Fibers West for this weekend. V virtual spin group is well and away and up, up and on its way. We, our next uh, meeting will be on Tuesday, March 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. And um, Rebecca will be here and she'll be a part of it. So <laughs> that'll be really fun. So for those who are part of that, I've already emailed you, you guys know, but there are a couple of spots left and, and available if you guys want to join and give it a try and see what you think. And um, if you want to learn more, there's more um, at patreon.com slash wellforpearls. If you're looking for show notes, you can go to wellforpearls.com or Patreon, and that will all be linked in the box down below on here on YouTube. So I think that's it for housekeeping. Um, it's just so great to have have everybody here. I feel like it's like a you know bringing the community together. And I was saying yesterday in the wool stream because um, that was yesterday morning. We were chatting um, in the chat and just in the group about like bringing the community together more and more. And you know, there's the meetup in the UK at the end of April and just trying you know as much as possible to bring one another together. And that's really what it's all about. So. Um, I, I, I know Rebecca feels the same way. I'm going to speak mm -hmm. for you for just a sec. Do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> embrace it, own it. Yeah. Um, that, you know, this is, this is what it's all about. And, you know, mm -hmm. just the fact that you guys are here in the chat and are taking the time out for us all to be together is just really, really, really special. I feel really mm -hmm. blessed. So is that workshop something you might offer? You know what, Eve? Um, 
That's a great question. I hadn't really thought about that. I guess because of the book, um, I hadn't sort of like thought about that. But that's a great idea. Maybe that's something I should talk to Felicia about actually is maybe me and Katrina developing it into a workshop for Sweet Georgia. Um, I'll keep that in, my, in the back of my mind. Great idea, um, Eve. You've always got great ideas. Is Rebecca enjoying the warmer weather? So much. <laughs> yes, it's, there's sun right now. I got out of the plane. It was like, rain. I didn't even remember that I missed rain. <laughs> it's like, yes, it feels so good. Yeah, this is like summer for That's me. awesome. So I said to her last night, I'm like, it's cold. And she's like, oh, this is cold? Yeah, yeah. I just had to check, make sure I wasn't like underdressed. Oh, oh. Okay, I'll be fine. So funny. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, chat, you guys. Um, will someone get a photo of your shawl in the booth? Oh, that okay, that's for Kelly. Never mind. Katrina might, if she has time. Aw. I'll totally try and do that. That'll yeah. be easy. I'll put it in Slack. Yeah, that would be, that wouldn't be hard. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, I think that's all for uh, where our, you know, cut up for a minute. So um, we've got some community participation that I want to share with you guys. We've got some breed and color studies from the community to share. And then we thought we would talk about our works in progress. And I did a very, very selfish thing this weekend. And I sat at my wheel and I spun what I wanted to spin. So I will show that with, um, share that with you guys today. Um, I am going to turn this camera off while we move things around. So just give me a quick sec and we'll run the intro video and um, get be up, up and on our way. She actually might be Eve, she might be a bit blurry, and it's just because of the camera. Yeah. So. I don't know if I can scoot any closer. Yeah, it's no. it's hard when there's two of us. your computer here. Mm, yeah, the, the laptop, the desktop. Well, and actually, usually I turn this so that you don't look. Okay. I always look at that, because I always want to be like, <laughs> and then I don't look at the lens. All right, so for community participation, for the month of March, we've got a giveaway going on um, for four ounces of pin drafted Shetland from Diz Darrow Ranch, which you get to meet Lori tomorrow. I know, I'm so excited. That's so good. Um, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, her and Mona, you'll meet Mona too. Um, they're located in Tappan, British Columbia, which is in the Okanagan. Um, Carla, who's a member of our community, that's her stomping ground. And West Coast Color is also up there. You'll meet Lynn as well. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. It's going to be an amazing day. Yeah, um, so please enter the giveaway in the March episode thread. I have linked it down below in the show notes. I had forgotten to do that last week. So sorry about that, you guys. Um, and the question to answer for the month of March for this giveaway is, what is your favorite yarn you've ever spun and why? Now for February, we had done a question from Amy about what is the item that you love to wear the most and why. And you guys embraced this and we're sharing uh, photos and stuff all throughout the month. And so I wanted to continue to share them on the podcast because you guys shared such awesome um, um, photos and projects and lots of inspiration. So this was totally all just grassroots from, from Amy's original question. So last show we um, announced the winner, but we're gonna continue to feature the different um, projects from that thread um, until we get to the end. So this one is from KTP31, post number four. And this is her, what she says, there seems to be a pattern to this thread already. Um, absolutely, everybody has been sharing um, Andrea Mowry patterns so far, which is kind of funny. My favorite item to wear is my Shift Cowl by Andrea Mowry. It is the first project that used 100% of my hand spun yarn. It was also what I wore on the hike where I got engaged, congratulations. So it has multiple reasons for why it is special to me and makes me smile when I wear it, of course. It's beautiful. It's so sweet. Yeah, yeah. And what a memorable thing. Get get engaged while you're wearing something so gorgeous and in a gorgeous area. I wonder where you're from. I was wondering where the photo was taken. The You'll shawl have to... goes with the rest of the picture so well. It's all the natural <laughs> greens and blues. It's so beautiful. It's all coordinated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have to say in the, like, comment on YouTube or in the Ravelry group or something um, where, where the photo was taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, well done. 
Um, so we've got our zero to hero going on in um, the Ravelry group, and this is a spin along that is open to everybody. Um, the idea of zero to hero is to go from fiber to yarn to item. So you can process the fiber on your own. You can um, buy commercial comb top this, and you can dye it. You can buy hand dyed fiber, what, whatever you want, but it needs to be fiber to yarn to item. And the idea is to work your way through um, a large project that without some accountability to other people and to the community, you probably wouldn't finish. Um, I'm doing my no frills cardigan out of my Gotland Romney fleece. Do you have a zero to hero project? Um, Are you not, gonna do one? I don't. Yeah, <laughs> not probably not this year. Not realistically. It's like it's, subs it up. Yes, <laughs> subs it up. Yeah, fifty one yarns is sort of all I can manage this year. But that's a big we'll spin see. along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a big commitment. Fifty one yarns mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but I'm living vicariously through everyone else's projects. Some of the photos on that thread are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Kelly said, did you leave enough room in your baggage for all your fiber? So much. <laughs> yes. You don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so I thought we would share a Zero to Hero project because um, the Zero to Hero has been trucking along sort of in the background. And if anybody wants to join in on this make along, it's open to everybody. Just join the Ravelry group and, and hop in on the project. And if you're a newer spinner, this is a great way to you know do a bigger project and work your way through because you know it can be really daunting going to a finished item not just the finished yarn but to the finished item so lizzie um her ravelry name is lizzie h post number 111 um, posted that she's going to join in with a project that she started a few years ago. She bought an amazing Gotland lamb fleece. It looks incredible. While on vacation a few years ago, the locks have a beautiful charcoal color, luster, soft, and are cool to the touch. I have several fleeces in my house, but this one I decided to hand comb and spin with a spindle rather than my wheel so I could drag out the experience. I just love that slow, wow. slow cloth, slow yarn, slow fiber. Mm -hmm. It has worked and it is time to move on. I have been spinning a two ply with the intent to knit up a swingy cardigan. Still looking for the right pattern, but I'm hoping this sal will help me do something with the yarn. So a swingy cardigan, something like the Hitofude maybe would be lovely. Because the two awesome. ply would open up in that lace. Mm -hmm. It would be incredible. It's gorgeous yarn. Really well done, Lizzie. I love the description of how it's cool. It's just really nicely described. Mm. I can really imagine that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, she was on a hike. You're in the chat. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it was a hike in Colorado. I was wondering if it was Colorado. It looked very Colorado. Um, cause I've been to both Boulder and, uh, Colorado Springs. Um, beautiful, beautiful. You guys are so inspiring. So this breed and color study that I wanted to share this month was from Greta and it took my breath away. I had not seen this pattern. Um, but what an amazing use of the yarn. So this is our breed and color studies that's going on right now. All of the information about Breeding Color Studies is linked below and our next study will be starting July 1st. So we have a little bit of a lag period to help with Katrina's dye, dye schedule. Um, and this is from Greta, Greta, the warmest row. She's very active in our community and um, I was just really excited to share this with you guys because wow, like what a project. Um, she just finished, she's just about finished with my mountain, Montana Mountain Cowl. I just have to tuck in tails, block, and graft the tube to itself after twisting once. My project, my notes on the project were that she spun the study fiber by using the control braid as one ply and the graffiti interrupted as the other. The interrupted braid she broke into colors and rearranged them to match the other ply. This is a huge amount of work. Mm -hmm. I, don't, yeah. I don't even know how she did that. With all the whites playing around in there as well. So she chose a plain white Polworth comb top from Deep Stash as the background color to the cowl. She was curious to see how the white in that one ply might disappear into the background when it came up. And um, it's interesting because it doesn't really look like it did disappear that much. No, I think it just sort of made it a little bit more pastel and added that depth to it. Yeah. That is a lot of work. That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's um, work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> amazing. It's awesome. 
She knew going into the project that she would have more yardage in the study braid than needed for the cowl. So the cowl only needs about 150 yards or so. So there would be some breaking and restarting of sections of the gradient if she wanted to span the whole cowl, um, placing the blues towards the middle. She went down three needle sizes to get the fabric that she wanted. So she made the cowl a bit longer by adding two or three extra repeats of the motif. The Polworth plumped nicely and spun so easily, the undyed braid by nature seemed to want to spin thinner than the dyed. But it worked out that the pattern used a thinner weight yarn for the background, so it worked out great. I love how the barter, barber pole sections are subtle and the overall gradient was achieved. The white in that one ply didn't fade as much as she expected. So Greta, just really, really beautiful project and well done. This is just incredible. Um, and I love the pattern. And what a great use for gradient yarn. So I was actually, because I spun that gradient for um, the, it was one of my six yarns that I did for the braiding color study as well. It was a true gradient, because um, I was doing it for my 51 yarn spin along. Um, I was actually thinking about maybe using this pattern as well, because I just love the look of those triangles. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Like, is it slip stitches, do you think? I don't know. Maybe mosaic, kind of? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, it's a really neat effect. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. And she got she was able to um, preserve the underlying colorway repeat mm -hmm. of the graffiti, which is just incredible. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, hi, Greta, good to see you. Hi, San, Tiffany, Jill. Um, I'm assuming, Jill, you'll be at uh, Fibers West on Friday. Hi, Sarah, hi, Karma. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Greta, it does beautiful work. Um, yeah, just, just gorgeous, Greta. So really, really super well done. You guys are so, so lovely. <laughs> Mesmerizing. I love that. All right, we are going to pivot a little bit. I'm going to go back to our main camera. Let me turn stuff on. We'll just get this set up. We've got a little bit of a different setup with the camera now because um, I was having so many problems with the webcam. But unfortunately, it means we're sort of um, hamstrung a little bit with batteries. So um, I really wanted to share this. This was my selfish spin from the weekend. So this um, yarn has been in my stash with uh, singles about maybe 50 yards of singles being held on like a little Ashford weaving bobbin for the last probably six years. Wow. And I found it when we were cleaning out this area over the weekend because this there was a bookshelf behind me. There was um, a shelving unit here to my left and there was fiber everywhere and it was so disorganized. It was a great excuse to clean everything out and move the office upstairs so that um, Rebecca could have the office and have it as a bedroom and I found this project and um, I just on Sunday afternoon I needed something quiet and I thought you know what I'm just gonna sit and spin and come what may and I got the whole thing done <laughs> I sat and I just spun and spun and spun it's 50 grams wow. of camel silk this is from mm. West Coast color and um, I used my e-spinner, so I used the Ashford e-spinner, and I set the singles to two o'clock, and um, I just, I have to keep this in focus. I have to focus. I have to focus to get it in focus. And I wor I just spun it worsted, so short backward. I was smoothing quite hard, like mm. because of the camel and the silk, I, I smoothed it quite, like I was quite firm with my smoothing. And, um, I just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And then when I got to the end of the fiber, I just wound off. I think I ended up with six weaving bobbins in total of singles. And then I did a little two ply sample, but I didn't love it. And you can see the texture of the silk. There's a little bit of texture there to the silk. I didn't really like it. And my original, original, original plan was to make a four ply cable but I had started spinning the singles in the Z direction and because I like to finish finish cabled yarns going in the S direction because I tend to unknit Z's finished yarn, um, I decided in the end to do a three ply and I absolutely, 
not sure this is gonna focus. It might be a bit too close. I absolutely love the evenness of the yarn compared to the mm -hmm. two-ply. Um, you can see how like the twist angle just that little bit firmer because mm -hmm. here you can really see the texture of the silk yeah Cause that 50 50 silk I was wondering what kind of silk it was like it didn't actually say on it if it was Tussa silk or mulberry silk mm -hmm. and I was kind of wondering if it was mulberry because it was a little bit more um, like textured yeah so um, I actually have photos of the finishing process for this because um, so this was this the the um this was the yarn like straight off of the wheel. So I hadn't finished it yet. And there's no memory to this yarn, like there's no bounce or elasticity or anything because of the camel um, and the silk. And you know, and there's no scales per se. So I had to add a lot of twist. But because it was 50% silk and I don't know what kind of silk it was, I decided to bring a pot of water to the boil. And this is a trick that I learned from my friend Kim McKenna and I brought it to the boil and then I turned off and then I kind of deviated a little bit I turned off the element but I, and I added a little bit of eucalyptus wool wash um, and I didn't swirl it around or whatever I just added a little bit and then I put the skein in mm. and I just left it and I let it come down to room temperature on its own um, so these were all of my weaving bobbins that came off of the wheel. So in my total yardage is 240 yards. That's pretty for great. How many grams? Four, 50 grams? 54 grams. Okay. 54, yeah. I, I wow. think I said 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it definitely counteracted the nubbliness of the silk. Do you find you have to yeah. moisturize like crazy when you spin like a fine fiber like that? You know, I, I like didn't I'm, with yeah. this one. But Maybe my hands are really dry because I live in a really dry place. <laughs> it is. You yeah. said this morning how, mm -hmm. how, how damp it is mm -hmm. here. Um, well, and this isn't super, like if you feel it, it's mm -hmm. quite soft. Mm -hmm. And the finished yarn is yeah, really Yeah, I can feel my soft. fingers scraping. Like I just, oh. I just have really scaly fingers. Interesting. Yeah, just that That's little bit beautiful. of difference. This is going to be an amazing, like, shawl. Mm -hmm. if you, did you feel it? Did you no. pet it? <laughs> it's, it's true luxury true luxury yes. fiber gorgeous yeah Isn't that fun mm -hmm. yeah because it's got the it's very airy yeah 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 it feels like and yet firmly spun like that mm -hmm. twist angle is quite high mm -hmm. it's probably 35 to 40 degrees maybe a little bit higher but not crunchy mm -hmm. like it would be if it was just silk it's just as it's, it's almost just as shiny as it would be if it was totally silk but totally. it doesn't have that crunch I wonder if that's the camel because yeah, it's 50 50. Definitely. Yeah, it's got that softness mm -hmm. of the camel. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've got some yak silk at home and that makes me want to break it out. Mm. That was actually part of my motivation for getting this done because when I found it um, in the virtual spin group right now, we talked about. Um, doing a little bit of a study um, as like a small group um, on sort of some of these like luxury fibers. So looking at some Kiviet, um, cashmere, camels, um, yak, but um, um, there was another one, buffalo or bison. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was, no, Kiviet. There was another one that was listed that we had talked about, me and Rosemary in particular. Oh, speaking of Anyways, Kibiet. that's what made me do this. Ooh, do you have some Kiviet to yeah, share? Yeah, I, I have a show and tell from a friend. This is actually a request. I Ooh. have a spinning buddy now. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> that's amazing. Another person in my town who spins. Um, I'll put this on the yeah, go for it. thingy thing. She, um, she will take Kiviet fiber and put it mm. through a drum carter. So this has been drum carded. Oh, my goodness. And... Um, yeah, she hand picks it off of the <gasps> pelt and um, ends up with just so much that she can cart it so that she, you know, put it through a carter so it spins faster. And the frustration she's having is that um, this is the underside of the bat and then this is the top side and you can see that it's got lots of neffy bits on it. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that's because she has a 72 TPI carter. Oh. Um, so I've, I've advised her to get one with 120 times per inch, but, um, I have yeah, 120. Wanted, we could okay. try it. Yeah. We could just put it through and yeah, see if it's let's different. See if it's any different. Yeah. But she, she also wanted to know if there was any ideas for how to, um, 
how to spin it when it is a little nubbly like this because we yeah. i'm sure we've all got those bats that we just put through and it was like oops now i've got this bat and i still want to use it totally um, yeah so this is beautiful isn't it nice <laughs> just pet it <laughs> it's like a little it's like a little furry baby mm-hmm. and this is like a fraction <laughs> oh, she wow. will pull off these four ounce bats <gasps> They're huge, and she'll so she's trying to spin them up to to sell to eventually you know do some economic development up there because mm. um, there's actually a few women who spin up there, um, a few Inuit women who spin. Wow. So, do you want to talk ways. a little bit about where you're from and where sure. you're living now and stuff? Because yeah. some people don't know you. Mm-hmm. The um the 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 woolen spinning community knows you, mm-hmm. although there's probably some people who don't um, just because they. Um, um, you're maybe um, not as active online, but are still still members of the community. So, do you mm-hmm. want to talk a little bit about like your background sure, and yeah. what took you guys to the Arctic? Yeah, and yeah. I'll um, I'll maybe turn off the the secondary camera for a minute just mm-hmm. to like I have to save the battery on this camera, but the I feel like the quality of the video is worth it to, mm-hmm. for that sacrifice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my husband and I have lived in. <laughs> Look at Eve's question. Oh, am I going to be your Sorry. trivia dealer? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'll have to talk to my, my people. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Yes, people have people are very generous up there, and it's it's evolving as, a, as an industry up there. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Black market. Yeah. Got to keep it above board. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I live in Rankin Inlet, which is due north of Winnipeg. If you get in a plane and you fly due north from Winnipeg for two and a half hours, that's where I live. Uh, It's not quite the Arctic Circle, but it is technically the Arctic because it's tundra. There's no trees there. Uh, It gets very, very cold, uh, obviously. And um, yeah, the population is mostly Inuit. So um, my husband and I are Anglican priests, and we moved to Iqaluit, which is east uh, on Baffin Island. We lived there for four years. And then we just moved this summer to Rankin, where uh, my husband is taking over the parish. Um, so yeah, we it's our new home, and and we already really love it. It was it was kind of fun taking off and being like, now I can see this town, and I know so much more about it than from when I landed there, and I really love it. So it's great because now I live in a place that has fiber. A Callowit has no fiber sources. There are no muskox, no cotton, no nothing that can be fiber can grow. Um, on Baffin Island. So it's really exciting to be somewhere where there's muskox. Um, some people even get kiviet from, um, you can uh, get kiviet from uh, Arctic hare and from, um, what's the other one? Arctic fox. So, so some companies actually harvest it from those pelts as well. And it's a great way to make use of uh, what's really just a byproduct otherwise. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Um, and oh, are you that. guys? Look at that. Yeah. And and are you guys um, sort of planning to stay there for a while? That's the hope. We that's our home now. We would really like to stay there for ten years or, or oh, wow. more. We want our kids to go to school there, and you mm-hmm. know if we can make that work. And yeah, that's where we want to have our family. Mm-hmm. We it's a really great place to raise a family because it's it's slower pace of life. It's just different. You're unplugged from a lot of things there, and so we have a little bit more ability to have the lifestyle that we want for our family Mm, that makes sense so for those who don't know where we're talking about i'm going to cover myself up for a minute that is where rebecca lives Mm -hmm. (laughs) i love modern technology it's awesome isn't that amazing Mm -hmm. i can throw it up there for a minute so she yesterday she flew down from rankin inlet straight down to winnipeg and then connected to vancouver Mm -hmm. from winnipeg and i picked her up at vancouver international which is very cool so uh and where E. Callowit, I'm trying to remember. It's to the east. It's to the east. Yeah. So, and it's just out of it's just out of the shot, I mm-hmm. think, right? It's not on the map. Yeah, on the other side of Hudson Bay is the bottom of it. It's this really big island, kind of almost the size and shape of California. It's it's big and a Callowit is near the bottom. And it's the capital of Nunavut. Mm-hmm. And Rankin is like the second uh, not the second biggest, but it's the other hub. Yeah. So yeah. it's really nice that it only takes one flight to get south. Everywhere else, you have to fly to Rankin or to Iqaluit and then fly south. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps with some geography for people who uh, aren't as familiar with this area of the world. 
not that where we are right now is this area, but like Canadian geography and the Arctic in the north. Are you technically in the Arctic there? So there are multiple definitions of Arctic. Yeah, um, that's why I was the, wondering. It's, it's below, we don't get the 24 hours of daylight and the 24 hours of sun, of night. So okay. it, that we're not that Arctic, but because we're technically tundra and because of how cold it gets, we're Arctic by that definition. Oh, okay. If you're above the tree line, then by some definitions, that's Arctic. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. When we were in um, Whitehorse this past summer, um, we were chatting with some people that are born and raised up there and stuff, and they were telling us, like, all the different ways that you can define, like, what is the Arctic. And I kind of always just thought it was, like, a certain latitude. Mm -hmm. I and, thought that for uh, years. I only yeah. found out the difference, like, last year. It's like, oh, I do live in the Arctic. I've been, like, sort of saying, oh, I don't really live in the... No, I do live in the Arctic. <laughs> Nora yeah. has decided that Rebecca, she lives in the North Pole, and Ooh. that um, there's, like, she's been going on and on about, oh, mommy's friend from the North Pole. <laughs> Like yeah, close enough. <laughs> close yeah. enough. Her first question was whether I'd seen a polar bear. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, sweet. that was the first thing she yeah. asked you. Love it. She asked me yesterday if it was okay to ask you. I'm like, absolutely, yeah. you can ask if she's seen a polar bear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe it was between Rankin and Iqaluit as the capital with Nunavut was formed, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's, that's right, right, Kelly. Yeah, mm. that would have been a different story if it yeah. was in Rankin, but yeah, it is what it is. I remember that too, actually. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Tiffany, I didn't know you were in Thunder Bay. I feel like I knew you were in Ontario. I did get your Slack message, by the way. I'm gonna, I'll respond to you. We haven't had any uh, of what we were talking about yet here in our hospitals, so fingers crossed. Um, hand washing. Yeah, keep washing your hands. Um, all right, I'm just, I just want, don't want to miss it. <laughs> this is, this is why I need a co-host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I were Nora, I'd be more excited about Rebecca seeing Santa. I think that's really what she wanted to ask yeah. about the North Pole. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Santa mm -hmm. gets around. He does. Um, awesome. Okay. So do you want to share some of your works in progress? Sure. Oh, you know what? And I'll do my comfort yeah. fade. <clears throat> I'm not actually sure where I put it. Is I that the may bag? or may. Yes. I wonder if I left it downstairs. Oh, did anybody have any thoughts about the drum carter? Oh, yeah. Friend, ooh. we're about spinning fibers that are already carded and kind of like that. No, I haven't seen a polar bear. My husband has, though. <laughs> so, have my, you seen yeah, it? <laughs> my, yes. Jill wants to know, well, yeah. what was the answer? I haven't personally seen one. My husband has. He was at the edge of town once, and there was one kind of heading up a hill. It was There were already wildlife officers there, so oh. um, they try and keep them away from town. They try and scare them away if they can. Um, I haven't personally seen one, although we did go camping once, like, the day after one had been sighted on the camping grounds. Oh. So, yeah, this is why we're very careful. Yes, totally. Yes. Yeah, and allow them to live their life mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, we try. Oh. Yeah, if you guys have any ideas about the carding, um, and we'll put this through my carter and see if we have any, and we'll report back if I remember. This is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could sit here and pick these hairs yeah. all day. I just love it. I love picking out guard hairs. I know that's weird. <laughs> it's very um, satisfying. It is. I have to just embrace it. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that. Yeah, sure. I have um, that other caveat too. We should we should card that up too. Mm -hmm. That um, I think that was from you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if if my purple bag isn't up here, I'm wondering. I think I might have left it downstairs. Do you want me to go down, poke around? Oh, for it? you talk about your oh, works okay. in progress, and I'll I'll go grab it while you're doing that. Okay. Um, I personally think having nubs nubs in yarn gives it a bit of personality. Yeah, you know what, Alicia, mm -hmm. Alicia, I'm I I'm kind of inclined to agree with you. I think sometimes that that's part of what gives it the interest. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, and thank you for your guys' co um, compliments on the on my yarn. We kind of went on to other stuff, but thank you. So I'll go and run. I'm going to get a coffee refill. And you, okay. why don't you share your sweater? Because right, it's I'll just start. beautiful, and it makes her, it makes her eyes pop. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's my color. Yeah, it totally is. Okay. Hi, everyone. I have you to myself. I might do anything. <laughs> um, this is so. This is a sweater that is having its second knit through. I had this uh, hand spun yarn is that in the right place? Um, that I spun this 
kind of back when I was first part of this community and just starting to explore, you know, sampling and um, uh, getting what I wanted out of the yarn. And this is what I settled on. It's a combination of an art bat, a really crazy art bat, and a Polworth hand dyed braid that ended up being kind of the same colors. And it's just one of my, this is probably my favorite yarn I've ever spun. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's kind of dense. It is kind of dense, but mm. because I was still getting to know it, but, um, it's oh, gorgeous. she doesn't have the camera on. Oh, let me move. I'll turn it around for you guys. There we go. Sorry. There you go. There you go. Now you know what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So that was the yarn I was trying to use, and I wanted to put it in a sweater. I had about 300 something, maybe 360 yards of it, and I just wanted to put. I had wanted to put it in a yoke or something. So I made. Uh, I started with a Keith Moon, which is a Kate Davies pattern. I'm pretty much only knitting Kate Davies patterns right now. Don't ask me why. It's a jag. <laughs> I'll get over it eventually. But I. Uh, it. The Keith Moon has like a big stripes, two big stripes, one here and one here, and I had an orange stripe here that it was this color. And mm. it I thought it would work and it didn't. It was just not right for me. I just decided after I knit the whole thing, you know what? I really think that looks awful. I don't like it. It's so like too bright or just it was not the too right color? orange. Yeah, I <laughs> I was I didn't have the yarn with me when I was shopping for for yarn to go with oh. it, and I just like this this. Yarn. I I thought it was more of a mustardy kind of color. I wanted a mustard color to pick up the the little hits of mm. Mm -hmm. yellow in that, but mm -hmm. this was so bright it just totally overwhelmed it, and oh, it did yeah. not look good. Oh, that's um, too bad. Yeah, and I it, the other problem was that this because this is pretty dense, it looked kind of. It was a different fabric. It was like up here was a different fabric. It was heavier. It was nubbly. It was. It didn't work to have a big block of that and then the rest of it be this lighter kind of stuff. Oh. So yeah, I. So this is Keith Moon, you guys. Me. Yeah, I had a friend who said that. That's Clemson Orange. I was like, okay, that seals it. I'm ripping it out. This is Keith Orange for those who don't know oh, this Keith sweater Moon. pattern. Yeah. Keith Moon. Sorry. Keith Orange. Is that what I said? That's mm. hilarious. That's, so that's what she means by like the big stripe at the very top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. makes that totally makes sense. I haven't actually seen this pattern. Yeah, it's from the Yolks book. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I ripped it out and ended up settling after I asked you guys for your thoughts uh, on making Ringle, which is a, another Kate Davies pattern, mm -hmm. and I converted it to be top down. And uh, yeah, I'm much, much, much happier with this fabric. Having the little stripes makes it much more forgiving of the yarns being different mm -hmm. weights. Yeah, you and, can't even tell that they're yeah, different weights at all. I'm I'm much happier with it. Um, the one problem I, I have this. is I I want it. I want this. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hang on. I I ended up I did it top down because I figured oh I want to just keep going with the stripes till I run out of the till I run out of the green. Yeah, but. I'm. I got a whole nother skein of this. It's like oh. I'm. I could probably do the whole thing in the stripes. I was you not should. anticipating that. So I don't so know. Yeah, I was thinking to just do like a yoke or do like a deep yoke, kind of like the, mm. like the Lovage sweater. You know, how it has that really deep yoke. Um, but um, yeah. So I'm undecided. I need to. I need to put it on a string and try it on so I can see is, where the stripes fall. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. It it's, is beautiful. I remember when you posted this yarn because mm -hmm. I swooned. Mm -hmm. I love this kind of stuff. This this kind of yarn is my absolute most favorite hand spun. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I, there's something about it that just to me is, just sums up everything about spinning that I love. Because there's just no other way you can get yarn no, like that. A machine no. can't make that. No, no, agreed. That is just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's a not, it's, it's homogenous enough and analogous enough that it's not, not that it would be unwearable if it wasn't, because a, a self-striping or variegated yarn or a striping yarn in this would still work. Mm -hmm. um, but there's just something about this that's just so pleasing, mm -hmm. you know? I just love this so yeah. much. Beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, and, and well done on your choice of contrast color. Thank you. Love that green. <laughs> the orange was teamy. This is lovely. Yeah, agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed, Dan. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Oh, you guys are so kind. Yeah, you guys are awesomely supportive. Thank you. <laughs> They're so lovely. Yeah, and yeah, this was in the pattern to, to have the last little row be the be yeah, the contrast cool. color. I thought that was a really neat touch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it when the, that type of stuff is included. Yeah, those little fine details are just really nice. There's a... Um, tranquil, yes. It's a tranquil color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a couple of Kate Gagnon... Osborne toque patterns where she casts on with the contrasting color. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So that's really the only thing I'm knitting right now. I brought my 51 yarns. Oh, you should show that. But I just finished. I was feverishly knitting my swatches on the plane, and you're going to laugh at me. I Last night we got in like super late. I'm falling asleep tired, but I. I, I used my cup of water and I got the swatches wet and I blocked them on the, the cushion in the bedroom because I was I like, so I need much. these That's to be amazing. blocked. But That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, so if anybody, mm. if nobody can guess what this colorway is, then you haven't been around wool and spinning for long <laughs> enough. This colorway is all things Rebecca. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see if you guys know what it is. I, you, there will be all of a sudden, this chat will explode because it's like yeah. Rebecca and this colorway go... To, yeah. Oh, these are beautifully. Oh my gosh, you're spinning. They turned oh. out so nice. They are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Make sure they're Thank all in the, in the shot here. Of course, the camera's going to register this as being quite dark, but mm-hmm. that's okay. We'll it is it, it is very dark. It is what it is. It is a very dark colorway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys got it. Arctic yeah. berries. Yeah. This colorway, for a little bit of background for those who are new to this, this place, um, this colorway kind of has become a little bit infamous in the <laughs> in the woolen spinning community for several reasons because it was actually one of the three colorways that was developed by Katrina for our Finn study back in 2017 and or was it 2016? Uh, 2017, no, no, yeah. yeah. It was... And um, it was one of the three, and Arctic Berries was uh, Rebecca's. Photo she that she submitted in our inspiration thread that's still in the Ravelry group and going strong, and um, Katrina chose it and and developed this colorway, um, you know, f- based on the photo, um, and it was colors of of berries on the Arctic tundra, mm-hmm. and um, it's kind of become like this. I don't know how to describe it, but it's just kind of become one of those colorways yeah. in our group that everybody knows, everybody loves, and you've spun it all these beautiful different ways. Yeah. So do you want to talk about this? And actually, I have the undyed fiber, like, or sorry, the dyed fiber, and oh, what the original, sweet. it's right there, and I'll mm-hmm. grab it. And you guys okay. can see fiber to yarn to swatches. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. It's what the show's all about. Yeah, so... You know, it meant so much to me that Katrina picked my pictures because I love color, I love spinning color, but I am not a dyer. And so when she chose mine, I was like, yes, I'm just so, I was just so excited. Um, So of course I had to buy an extra braid of it and I was hoarding it for, uh, I knew not what, but when the color, when we got to the color chapter of 51 yarns, I said, I know that's what it, that's what it has to be. Um, So I, I did two different self-striping ones. This is super short. Uh, I just stripped it down to like twelfths or something and then chain plied it so I could get the super short repeats. And this one I didn't strip down quite as much, but then I did a traditional three ply trying to make sure that they matched up. That's this so one, right? Uh, no, that's the fractal. This is the fractal. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's more heathered. Mm-hmm. This is the that's traditional this, that's three the ply. traditional three ply self striping. So this is mm-hmm. how I had spun it when I did it for the study, except as a two ply. Okay. And what I loved about it was you still preserved that underlying colorway mm-hmm. and the underlying repeat of the colorway. Because if if Rebecca continued knitting, the colorway would repeat. So it would go back to the purpley blue, to the green, to the purpley blue, to the red, and it would it would like continue repeating. Mm-hmm. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. Your spinning is just beautiful. You know this. This fiber practically spun itself. Mm. I, and I think I also finally clicked, the, the short backward finally clicked for me. Uh, yeah. And that was like, oh, okay, I'm going <laughs> to do this now. <laughs> um, yeah, amazing. and it was a bit of a test case for me too because I really want to try spinning for socks. I've never really I've, I've never really done that before, so I wanted to see if I even could, 
you know, get through four ounces and it's been fine enough. And yeah, I think yeah, I, you I can. think I did. Uh, nailed yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very thankful for that. So and this is a fractal, uh, which you, I thought this was interesting because it, it the overall the dark really. This I think overall it's very dark because the the lighter yeah oh. the lighter tones get Here sort of swallowed up by the other plies. Look at that heathering. Mm. Oh, so for yeah. those who know me, <laughs> this is my favorite one. Mm. Look at that depth and the texture, and you can still see. This is why fractals are so amazing because you can see the underlying colorway and the repeat of the underlying color, and yet you've got this movement over top of the other two singles moving through the colorway much much faster. But if you look at the depth and try to look sort of, I think of it as like three layers, at the base at the base of it, you've got the underlying colorway. So when you lay the traditional, I'm gonna talk for just mm -hmm. a second, take over for just a sec. Do it. <laughs> Own it. Um, when you put the traditional two, three ply, oh, that was my hand. When you put the traditional three ply and the fractal next to each other, this is very strange sitting wow. here. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, look at, that. look at how in the middle here you've still got the green of the underlying colorway. You've got the purpley blue, which is my favorite color besides yellow, um, here, and you've got the red at either ends. Like you've still got that that bottom. It's, it's like three layers, right? And if it's, if a fractal is a two ply, then you've got two layers. If you've got three ply, you've got three layers. There's the underlying colorway of that one single that, that you're spinning end to end that you don't split. And that's what you see as the foundation for these fractal yarns. And then you've got the second singles that you split a few times that moves more slowly through the colorway. And so that, helps to build that foundation and then you've got those flecks of the third singles that you stripped and stripped and stripped and then you spun and moves through the colorway much much faster and that's what gives you that sort of almost um, like confetti or heathering effect that is just makes fractals so interesting because what we can do this is the original colorway repeat so that you guys can see how the fiber was originally dyed. So that's the, the original repeat in the fiber and look at how it's preserved in both ways of spinning. Like it's mind blowing, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So green to bluey to the purpley to the red back to the purpley to the blue to the green and then back again. It just repeats, each, um, the way that Katrina did these, instead of doing like red, blue, green, red, blue, green, if she had done that, it would have combined in the spinning process, the red and the green and made um, brown. So instead she mirrors the colorways, um, or she did for this study. Um, she did for graffiti and trapped it as well. And we ended up with, um, you know, these effects of these sort of mirrored repeats that are just so incredible. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So oh. Florence has a really interesting question that, that, or statement that Jill sort of anticipated the answer for, because I think this is really super interesting. Mm -hmm. She, Florence said, I wish our bodies were the same size as our arms, so the self-striping remained the same through the garment. <laughs> and then Jill said that, oh, maybe you could make a different self-striping yarn for different areas of the body. You can totally do that. Yeah. It takes a lot of planning, totally do that. you can totally well, do you, that. you've got, like, say, the Elizabeth Zimmerman percentage system, which tells mm -hmm. you right away, like, you know, 50% is your arms, so you just split it, you know, twice as much to, to do your arms and a little, you know, a little bit more strip for the body because this mm -hmm. is 80% and this is 100%. Or uh, don't quote me on that. You'd have to yeah, actually look at the pattern. Which book is that in? Is it in Knitting Without Tears? It's in a couple of them. Yeah. It's... Uh, I don't know if it's in Knitting Without Tears. I know it's in The Opinionated Knitter. Okay, The and Opinionated it's, Knitter. It's in another earlier one as well, but I don't okay. remember which one. Um, yeah. But what I did one time is I made a, a shawl for my daughter that was circular, mm -hmm. and I wanted the stripes to stay the same width as I went out the circle. Mm. So what I did is I started with 
you know, a really stripped down and then did a wider, a like less stripped, less stripped, less stripped, and then chain plied it. And then when I knit it up, it, it worked out really well. Oh, as cool. you went out and out and out, it was the same width of stripes. So you can totally do that. That's what's great about spinning, right? Yeah. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if anybody needed to be talked into why spinning is so amazing, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you needed that. Mm-hmm. I do think it's worth it to look up the percentage system for, mm-hmm. um, I I know it's in the Opinionated Knitter, and actually my, my Opinionated Knitter is like right over there. It's mm-hmm. on a bookshelf in our closet. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can figure incredible. that out. Like, I made these intentionally, like, this is about half the number of stitches that I would put in a pair of, of put in a sock. So if I wanted to have these exact stripes, on a sock, I would just strip it half as much and I would get those pretty much those same stripes. Yeah. Oh, so, amazing. Yeah, and then which it. one is this one? That's the gradient. I left it attached because, you know, it's yeah, you don't one long that. gradient, so you're just going to get the green in my little swatch. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to knit mm, with it, but you don't want to... Yeah. You want to rip that out to use it as part of Probably. the... Probably. Yeah. I, I'm thinking... Um, well, anyway, the... So this I did by tearing the braid up and mm-hmm. um, and what I had never actually done that before and what I liked about it is that even though you know it's it's pretty solid it there's some tonality to it mm-hmm. because of those other neighboring colors that got sucked into it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't anticipating that and it looks I yeah. think I really like that um, because I, I struggle sometimes yeah I struggle mm-hmm. sometimes with uh, just spinning like a gradient braid. I, I, I really love those gradient braids, but but I spun one once and I was kind of disappointed because it looked exactly like the braid, which yeah. is like, oh, of course that's what it was going to be. Yeah. And, it, and it's like a really beautiful, smooth transition, which is great if that's what you want, but I really like having just a little bit more heathering, a little bit more interest. I think that, that holds my attention more as yeah. I'm knitting. Absolutely. And as I'm spinning. That's why these yarns are so effective because mm-hmm. they keep you... What's the next role going to look like? Mm-hmm. Jasmine of the Knit More Girls, um, she always talks about like potato chip knitting. It's like mm-hmm. onto the next stripe, onto the next color. Like yeah. what, what, you know, what, what's next? What's next? Whenever I hear the potato chip knitting, I, I, I think of like Pringles. Like remember how it used oh. to say like once you pop the phone, the fun don't stop. That's what I think of. I'm like, it's like that. You just can't stop. I always think of the uh, bet you can't eat just one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, these are beautiful. I'm so glad you brought them. So what are you going to do with them? Well, um, most of my 51 yarns, I don't really know what I'm going to do with them, but mm. these, I think, have to be something. So mm-hmm. I am i don't know if it's enough of a, if it's spun tightly enough to be socks. I'm a little concerned that it wouldn't hold up since it doesn't have any nylon in it. Um, what fiber was it again? It's the Targi. Oh, it is. the. Tar- this is targi. the Targi too. Mm-hmm. So um, same, same fiber, same, yeah, same yarn. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know how there were those... Um, the, the socks two ways yep. thing. The I don't intentionally remember. mismatching. Well, it was like you would spin like a fractal and a gradient and yeah, strike and them. Yeah, strike them. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about doing that kind of, you know, do a fractal and a gradient in one and put these two together in, mm. in another. Or just do like top and bottom in another. But I could do it in fingerless gloves instead of socks if I wanted to. I was going to gonna say mittens would mm-hmm. be amazing. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, and this you've got so much yardage of this know, one. Yeah. You could you could really do something with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you have about... to think because the other thing you could do is striped shawl, put in a like a solid like a white That's or something, true. and do yeah. a shawl to really show them off. Mm-hmm. The the um, possibilities are endless. Yeah, I found that I oh, don't really beautiful. wear shawls anymore, so I've mm. kind of stopped knitting them. But yeah, yeah, they are so nice when you want to just show something off. Oh, I'm wondering where make. this one went. Oh, that's yeah, the is. that's the Short um, stripes, the variegated. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, chain plied. Um, I know Alana of um, a new spin on color. She instead of like saving a piece of her fiber, um, to like sort of when she's doing something like this, where she's doing a lot of experimentation, instead of saving her fiber. Um, as like her little sample of what the, the original fiber was like, she'll take um, like a little tiny strip of it like t- smaller than this um tiny 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 like tiny and she'll do a little chain plied um um you know sample and that'll mm-hmm. be her um to keep sort of what what was the original underlying colorway um and I've started doing that because it's really nice I don't necessarily want like an entire skein of yarn that's just this repeat I want to do something like you know, something like what's here 
Um, but it is nice to have like something like this where you have the underlying, you know, what the fiber actually it's kind of as a record. Yeah, yeah. exactly for your mm. record keeping. So I know that's something that she does. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks for letting me share that. I've been excited to bring that. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this stream is making me want more fiber. Isn't that like every week? Yeah, kind of. Uh, kind of. It's part of the problem. Definitely, definitely learning to, uh, I had a professor who said, you know, you can just replace envy with admiration. <laughs> So I, I try. I try and channel it like, oh, it's so wonderful that they did that. I don't need to do it. That's what I tell myself every week. <laughs> so this is the Comfort mm. Fade by Andrew Maori, and I'm actually finally finished the yoke. I just haven't had a chance um, with everything going on. I haven't had a chance to divide for the sleeves. So I have done my first um, fade repeat here of the Targi. So the yoke ended up being um, all the merino silk alpaca in the falling leaves colorway from sweet georgia and i actually did i talked about this yesterday on the wool stream so i won't talk about this um too too long but this is the the merino silk alpaca and then the next color that I'm currently fading in with right now is the targi and actually one of the unexpected um um sort of good things about this was the the targi is actually fading in really really nicely so it, I thought there would be a lot of contrast but it's actually ended up being really quite lovely so I've got my my next row is actually going to be um, targi and I'll separate for my sleeves and then hopefully next next stream um, we will I'll sort of have like I'll be well into the body of the cardigan hopefully that's that's the plan yeah <laughs> best laid plans so so did the, the in the in the place where they transition it looks like the the hues matched up yeah isn't that yeah, incredible that, that was completely yeah. by chance yeah well, and look it's turning worked. into blue right now and I'm gonna end up with um like I just finished a blue section and mm. the next section of the targi is blue yeah so that's pretty awesome yeah, Very so that's cool. the Comfort Fade by um, by Andrea Maori, and this is the right side. So it's reverse stockinette on the right side, and then the wrong side is obviously your stockinette. Um, and you do your increases on the wrong side, which is really nice. So um, you've got this lovely um, raglan shaping. And I talked about this quite extensively on the wool stream yesterday, so I won't go into like all the nitty gritty details um, just for repeat. But um, I am really enjoying it, and I am hoping that I can, can get the sleeves separated and keep on knitting and keep on building it. And I did have to change in the original pattern because she uses four yarns, and I'm only using three. I had to change the, the, the percentage, more percentages, of um, where I started the fade on this. So we'll talk about that a little bit more next time. So... Um, for those who um, aren't aware, I've had to move things around a little bit for spring break. So there is not going to be a stream on next week. I always take a little bit of um, a break on spring break because our kids are off for two weeks here. And um, I wanted, and I, I, I like to take a week just to sort of regroup. And um, by now we've sort of had a, um, you know, busy, winter and and by spring break I'm sort of ready for for a little bit of a, a break in um, um, podcasting every every week to catch up on stuff and get caught up and sort of start to plan the spring so originally that break was going to be the last week of March but instead it's going to be next week um, because of a couple of things that have come up and um, and then we'll be back to regular programming on the I think it's the 24th the 25th, we'll be back to regular program on the 25th. I even put the kids in soccer camp. Um, <laughs> so they're so excited about it. And so just please make a note of that and I will change the schedule, the post um, in the index that has the schedule, I will change it in there um, after we finish here. So we need to get our resident maths and, and gauge expert to do a class too, totally. <laughs> I don't know that I'm much of a gauge expert. I'm, I, I have explored many ways to fail at gauge 
Uh, yeah, I'm an expert on that. But yeah, you I do love me some swa- algebra. And yeah. swatching. You're quite See, the swatcher. I've gotten into the swatching, although I've gotten back away from it again. <laughs> this is my sweater that I didn't swatch for at all. Mm. Yeah. That reminds me, because we've got time. Mm. I was hoping you would talk about oh, your sweater, because sure. you posted it in Slack. Yeah. But um, if you want to if you want to share, uh, do you have any other projects, or is that nope, it? that's it. Oh, that was just mm-hmm. awesome. What mm-hmm. a great, that Arctic Berries, you nailed it. That was a great tanks, project to bring. Tanks. Yeah, so do you want to share uh, this Yeah, with so us? this is my uh, very first entirely hand-spun sweater. It's the Oran Dojaura. I looked up how to pronounce that. <laughs> I will link you it will, in the show will notes. spell it for you. Um, yeah. It's Scots because Kate Davies, huh, she does lots of uh, Scottish names in her patterns, mm-hmm. which is really neat. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so this is my first really sweater quantity that I ever made. I was given this fiber as a Christmas present back when I first got my first spinning wheel. So we're talking oh, wow. like 10 years ago. Wow. A long time ago. And I, I dyed it myself with um, uh, turmeric and black beans. Oh, cool. And then... It's a beautiful color. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of different. It's, I it's love it. It's a different kind of color. I, I'm I'm still not sure whether I'm going to over-dye it or not, but... Uh, oh, I love it. Yeah, no, okay, okay, okay. It's, um, my, favorite. <laughs> it's like my favorite color. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, it's I, I mean, it's different. It's stretching I it. it. Yeah, so... It looks good on you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I did it as a traditional three ply mm, seven years ago is wow. when I actually spun the yarn and I spun it for a shawl and um, then ended up just deciding I wasn't going to make that shawl. Mm. I just, you know, life. It was a really cabled, lacy, beautiful thing. And I just don't do cables and lace anymore. It's not mm. where I am in my life. Mm. And that's fine. But I, I tried three or four projects with this yarn, swatching and trying to figure mm. it out. And it just didn't want to be knit, really, until I landed on this one. And, uh, yeah, so it's it's, it's got this tiny little bit of um, twisted stitching, like twined knitting. And it's, you know, just great, just enough to be interesting with and, and sort of keep you sort of it helps you almost keep track of where you're at because totally. you kind of you're going back and forth and so that's very motivating but it's not you know it's pretty brainless yeah otherwise and yeah it was kind of before I knew about mixing up bobbins oh, so yeah <laughs> I just sort of applied as I went and so I ended up with very different gauges I ended up with between DK and fingering weight <laughs> Is, it was a pretty extreme difference. I ended up with so much that I could actually leave out the, the thinnest skeins and leave them for something really? else. Like, I had two skeins left over. Oh, okay. And, yeah. um, but I kind of ended up just starting, because it's uh, one piece, it's, it's the one piece to the armholes, and then you do the yoke kind of construction. Mm-hmm. I just, I started with the thickest and just worked my way oh, up. Oh, brilliant. And yeah. it, thankfully it didn't. It didn't affect you can't the tell. gauge very much. No, you can't tell. Um, and at I all. did the I did the sleeves at the same time with the same ball of yarn. Yeah. So that I could, you know, make sure that they'd be pretty much the same. And then the, for some reason the last couple skeins were dark were brighter. So the, mm. the top ended up brighter and then the button bands, but yeah, it's just it, you know you can't t- well and you can't tell like unless you really look at it okay. I wouldn't have even notice it was brighter mm-hmm. until us sitting here under the bright lights mm-hmm. I didn't notice down in the kitchen yeah. or anything until I was actually looking at it more okay. like yeah are the is the twine done with slip stitches or like with a cable needle um well they're like traveling twisted stitches so you oh, don't okay. need a cable needle to do them i I'd never use cable needles. I can't oh. be bothered. <laughs> I started out by being too lazy, so I, I taught myself how to cable without a cable needle because awesome. I'm too lazy to go find a cable <laughs> needle. I had to do lots of things like that. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. It's very sweet, yeah. and it's got the saddle shoulder. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, is it's lovely. got the combination raglan saddle, which is yeah, just super entertaining. Yeah, it's, it's just really like a, it just keeps you motivated to get there to mm-hmm. make it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I love it. Yeah, it's thanks beautiful. for asking. Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Oh, it's lovely. Um, there's a couple of questions. Um, and the what to do expert and the what. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Diane, so sweet. Yeah. You're so nice. Yeah. They are. They're amazing. Mm-hmm. Every, they, everybody's amazing. Um, there's a couple of questions about 
um, dates. So Spin Group, Eve, and Rosemary, and others is confirmed for Tuesday morning, March 17th, um, because Rebecca will still be here. So that will be happening um, on Tuesday morning. You'll be getting a link, um, and there are a couple of spots left in, in our Spin Group, so if you want to join, please do so, and, and just hop on over to Patreon. And if you're having problems, just send me a message, send me a note, and I will help you to navigate that. Um, even if you just want to try it for a month or two and just see if it's for you, um, you know, I, I know, you know, as a community, we're looking for more and more ways to, to connect with one another. And it is, um, you know, a full hour of sitting together and, and spinning and chatting and doing some projects together over time and learning together. It's really what you guys want. So that is on the 17th on Tuesday. And we'll make that our normal time at 9.15 Pacific uh, Daylight Time because we have gone through, our clocks have moved forward again. So crazy. Um, the Yukon didn't move this year, which is amazing. So maybe we'll get there eventually. And um, the reason, oh, and then the, and then the wool stream, the next one is going to be on the 24th. And the reason that I moved things last week is because um, I really wanted to get back to the second and fourth Tuesday of every month because that was the original schedule and um, that's what's on Patreon when you first pledge if you want to join the wool stream tier. So just in an effort to move things back to normal, um, I, I we, we had the wool stream yesterday and then it'll be again on the 24th. So the week of the 23rd, um, so not next week, but the week after, everything will be back to normal. Um, unfortunately, Rebecca will be going, will be home and uh, back in the chat, and uh, everything will be back to normal the week of the twenty third. So I hope that's clear as mud. And if you have any questions, never hesitate to get in touch with me and and to. Um, um, yeah, to reach out and to ask for clarification. And there is lots of posts and links and whatnot in the index. Um, if you have not bookmarked the index, I highly recommend that you do so, and it is linked below in the show notes. Yeah, the lace detail on Rebecca's sweater is so nice. Absolutely, it is. It's beautiful. Now I want to mm -hmm. make it. <laughs> um, that's great, Sarah. Wonderful. I love those wandering cables. Actually, you know what I like about the cables the most is that mm -hmm. they're asymmetrical. Like, they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. They're like winding vines. Well, that DNA kind of, that's what they, that pattern makes me think of sort of a DNA helix. I don't know. Yeah, It, it totally. doesn't have the, there, you can do it with little bits in between, so yeah. it really looks like DNA, yeah. but that's what I always think of with this. Now I'm never going to look at that sweater again without thinking there you DNA. Go. <laughs> for you. Yeah, in the study that I'm part of right now, we're looking at DNA. So it's like, now I'm like, hmm. Yeah, now you're really going to knit it. Science. <laughs> um, oh, hi, Becca. It's hi, good Becca. to see you. Um, I'm sure it's like it's bedtime for you with Henriette in the UK, so I know this time is a little bit challenging for you. Um, oh, really? Mumblings in Alberta that they might stick with daylight too. Oh, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, everyone. So... Beautiful Cardi. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Thank you for um, spending so much time with us. I really appreciate it. I think that was everything that we wanted to cover today. Um, what an amazing show. Um, thank you so much. Hopefully, if um, you're coming to Fibers West this weekend, please um, pop in and say hello. Um, I'll, we'll, I'll be teaching, um, I'm not actually sure which classroom number, but please feel free around lunchtime to pop in and just say a really quick hello, because um, we will be breaking for lunch around 12, 12.30. Um, and um, if, you, if you're in the marketplace on Friday, please, um, if you see us, um, you know, come and stop and say hello because um, we'll, we'll probably miss you guys if, if you don't come up to us. So um, both of us have some shopping that we want to do. So um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we see you guys. Um, have fun this weekend. Thank you, Sarah. I'm so glad you guys had enjoyed the show. Have a wonderful weekend. Happy spinning, weaving, mm -hmm. sewing, knitting. I'm yeah. still gonna, I'm working on finishing the forager vest. I'm trying to get that done. We were talking about Aisha in the, in the wool stream. And Kelly, I'm, if, who's local Kelly, not Edmonton Kelly, um, I'm gonna bring it with me regardless on Saturday for you to try it on. So, and I've got your fiber, it, I put it with my equipment for bringing on Saturday. So I've got your giveaway um, with me. Mm. And thank you, everybody, for being so supportive and having yeah. such kind things to say. I feel like I have you all in my heart. You know, I'm the I'm the representative. You know, 
Absolutely. On the other, I feel like I stepped through the looking glass to be here on this side of the camera yeah. and stuff. So thank you guys all for being so kind. Yeah. She walked into the, like, into the, like, the setup and she's like, holy smoke. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So much work. Yeah, it's fun, though. I mm. love it. I love it. I'm so happy to be able to serve this community. It's just mm. amazing. All right, you guys have a wonderful um, couple of days, Greta. We will see you tomorrow, mm -hmm. and um, I'll be in touch with you, Greta. And uh, I hope you guys just have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, um, and stay safe, and um, thank you so, so much for being here. Until next time, happy spinning, everyone. I will talk to you again in two weeks, and some of you I will see you before then. So take care, and um, see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>